Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. On today's video, as you can see, I'm going to be doing another demo to see if these new e.l.f. products are the real deal and they really work. Because you guys know I'm a fan of e.l.f. Um, there are quite a few products of theirs that I use like almost on a daily basis and I just always reach for their stuff. Um, I think it's great quality for the price and um, they just, I really like what they stand for. So I'm always interested in trying out some of their latest and newest products. I know I did a review um, not too long ago on their beauty blender type sponge. Um, I think it's called their e.l.f. precision sponge um, and I tried that out on my channel. I compared it to the beauty blender so if you want to check that out you can check it out right here. Just click the button. Uh, watch this video first or pause it and then click it if you'd like because um, this one's going to be good. I have a feeling. Um, so today we're going to be trying out the silicone blender duo which looks like this. Um, as you can barely see this one, but this one is a smaller one and then this is the larger. The smaller is meant for, you know, kind of cream, cream products and um, highlighting products underneath the eyes and things like that. This one is meant for bigger spaces on the face such as your cheeks, your forehead, things like that. So we're going to go ahead and pop this baby open. I've never used silicone sponges before, so I have nothing to compare this to, by the way. Um, that's just something I should mention. Uh, so this is just my first time using a silicone sponge in general. Oh my gosh, this feels like... Is this what a fake boob feels like? Is this what an implant feels like? <laughs> it's quite thick, very smushy. Um, one side of it is very smooth, the other side is smooth as well, but it has like more of a jelly finish. No, this one has a kind of... Uh, Thing where you can stick your finger in and I'm assuming this is the side we use this smooth side here I have nothing on my face right now I'm probably gonna go ahead and put a little bit of primer on I've been using the Laura Mercier foundation primer this is their uh, blemish less primer And then for foundation, just sticking kind of with Laura Mercier, I'm using their Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Foundation. I like to mix these two shades. Um, I am the shade 2W1 Macadamia, which is the lighter shade, and I mix it with a little bit of 3W1 Dust. It says apply half the amount of product, so I'm going to apply half a pump to kind of the tip. I apply it to the tip, I don't know. And then I'm going to just apply another little bit of uh, the darker foundation over the top. I'm not going to do a lot. I just did that much, as you can see. So, not a lot. Um, and now we're going to sweep it across the face. And then pat it. Oh, man. This definitely feels... You guys don't want to know what this feels like. This feels like I am sweeping and patting a piece of chicken breast on my face. <laughs> but honestly, <laughs> surprisingly, it is smoothing out the foundation, which is quite interesting. Oh, not bad. I'm going to sweep it and kind of pat it. Not quite sure how I feel about this. Um, let me just add a little more onto the sponge and see if I can do like a little more coverage here. I feel like this cheek right here, most of the product is concentrated like right in here, but I can't get it to um, blend downward more. So I'm just gonna apply it. well we'll do a full coverage look today this is like the definition of face beat just beating my face with a chicken breast fillet just beating it this is so funny 
All right. This sounds like it hurts, but it doesn't. <laughs> like you can hear it smack. <laughs> this doesn't have any pores in it, so it's not going to absorb the foundation you applied onto the sponge, which I like. Um, that means all the product is going on your face. There's no way it's going inside. So that's really good. In terms of what it's done, it has covered my face, obviously with the foundation. I'm not going to lie about that. It's very interesting. Um, I'm all for trying new methods of applying foundation, but this is just like next level. I don't know if I'd want to do this every single day to my face. It's really difficult to get the foundation to blend along the crevices of the nose and um, it, it kind of seems like it's a little bit uh, unblended in here so I'm gonna have to take a brush and go ahead and just like smooth everything out which it does say on the box it says you uh, use a blending brush to buff to a flawless finish so basically this isn't going to be an all like final step like end all be all for applying the foundation you're probably going to want to go in with a, a bigger like fluffier brush or some kind of stippling brush to just blend everything together and i'm just going to go ahead and try to just finish buffing the sides of my nose i'm going to go ahead and use my tarte shape tape concealer i am in the shade light to medium honey and I'm going to go ahead and apply that underneath the eyes. And I'm going to go ahead and beat the under eye area. I'm going to go ahead and apply some to the, um, the lid area as well. Because I like to use my concealer like the excess as a base for my eyeshadow and stuff. So I'm not going to lie, this actually did a wonderful job of blending out my under eye area. Like, oh my gosh. I think I'm actually more of a fan of this small one than the big, thick one. Because this one's a lot thinner than this huge, thick one. Wow, pleasantly surprised with the small one. I'm not gonna lie. It did do a really nice job of blending out my under eye area. I would actually even use this tiny one for all over my face. I don't think you need something so big for a face. Like, this is basically like a little bit bigger than my, my cheek area. Like, I don't need something this big. It's like too hard to work with. And on top of that, they failed to put um, a little finger grip in the back of it, which makes it even harder because you kind of got to like flop it this way. They do sell this one separately, actually. They sell it in another kit, which I have not opened yet. It's the Silicone Blender and Highlighting Sponge Duo. Looks like this. But honestly, I don't really think you need this big one. If you want to try it, you can. But honestly, I had kind of a tough time. And nobody wants to buy a sponge product um, or any kind of foundation brush and have to use another brush on top of it to buff everything out. Like, that is just kind of nonsense to me, to have to go ahead and use one of my own brushes to go ahead and buff out the foundation to finish it off. So now I'm gonna go ahead and bake my face, do the rest of the makeup look, and then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna go ahead and try out the highlighting sponge and see how that works. Now I'm back to try out the highlighting sponge from another one of the e.l.f. kind of duo kits. You can tell that's very, very pretty. I've never seen a sponge that had glitter in it, so it's very, very unique, very beautiful to look at. So I'm gonna go ahead and use it dry for the first side of the face. It says you can use it either wet or dry, and all you do is just go ahead and kind of pop it onto your highlighter powder, whatever powder you're using. Go ahead and just kind of grab the product and then go ahead and sweep it onto your face. I'm gonna go ahead and take the flat side 
pack some highlighter on there. I packed quite a bit on there, so I'm a little scared, but here we go. We're going to try it out. Bring it up towards the top of the forehead. Oh my goodness, it's actually working. I actually applied quite a bit. Um, again, this is the first time that I use this, so my bad. But it looks good. And it doesn't have that streakiness to it that sometimes can happen with smaller, fluffier brushes that we use to apply our highlighter. You can kind of leave like a streak of highlighter as opposed to a beautifully blended canvas. So this actually blends the product out really nicely and makes it look a lot more smooth and natural and doesn't leave any streaks. So I like that. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to run to the washroom really quick. I'm going to wet the sponge and we're going to come back and do the other side and see how this sponge does wet. Okay, you guys, I'm back with a huge highlighting sponge. It got like almost, I don't know, it got like two times its size. <laughs> it's definitely a lot softer and squishier than a beauty blender. Uh, but okay, it's wet now. We're going to go ahead and do the same process. Just going to... Apply our highlighter. I want to get a nice even coverage across the sponge to avoid any streaks. Okay, so that's what it looks like. And all I'm doing is kind of just sweeping and then taking it like I would a a blender sponge, a foundation blender, and just kind of lightly dabbing it onto the skin. And I can see this is definitely a little more intense than the dry side. You can kind of see that highlight a lot more even without me really moving too much. On this side it's a little more natural, a little more like easy to look at like in the daytime. This one's more for like, you know, if you like that kind of really bright highlight. This works so well. The bridge of the nose. And then left over on the cupid's bow. Oh my gosh, I want to highlight my whole face with this. Oh my god, you guys, I think I found my new favorite highlighting sponge, or just sponge in general. Like, this sponge is amazing. I've tried high-end highlighting sponges, I'm not gonna lie, and they were very stiff and very hard to work with. They didn't blend this easily. I think the softness of this sponge is what helps to apply highlighter so beautifully, and I think that's what other highlighting sponges are getting wrong, is you gotta remove the stiffness from the highlighting sponge, because you're trying to create a nice, beautiful, natural kind of looking highlight, so you need something soft and easy to blend the product onto the skin. You don't need something stiff and harsh. So this is amazing. Even dry, it's very soft, very easy to work with. So the silicone blender and highlighting sponge duo, which I highly recommend you guys to try out, that's the one that I'm sold on for sure, is 10 bucks. So super inexpensive. Um, it's on their website. Just search um, the name of it, which I will leave in the description box for you guys. $10, you can't beat that. Like, oh my gosh, this highlighting sponge is my new baby, I promise you guys. And even the mini silicone blender. I'm going to use it in other tutorials, I promise you guys that. And then the glitter silicone blender duo kit that I originally opened and tried in the beginning of this video is $8. So again, really inexpensive if you just want to try it out for yourself, if you want to see if maybe it works better on your skin. Everyone's skin is different and takes to products differently, so definitely try it out. It could have also been the foundation that I used as well. It's a little bit stiffer, a little bit... Um, faster drying than other foundations. If you've used it, you know what I'm talking about. Thumbs this video up if you want to see more videos like this and leave me a comment in the comment section. Also, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos just like this one and other content on this channel as well. And hit me up on social media, which will be linked in the description bar of this video. And I will see you guys again very soon with yet another video. Bye!